early computer systems imposed a difficult problem on their users due to the relatively small size of their main storage. Virtual storage techniques have substantially reduced this problem with the implementation of a single large address space, up to 16 megabytes in size, of virtual storage. This virtual address space appears real to the user. Although it's actually made possible through tables and hardware and software translation, of which the user is unaware. The single virtual storage approach has many advantages, such as more efficient use of real storage, easier job scheduling, easier program design, and improved multi-programming operations. The virtual storage technique is even more powerful than this, however, because with some additional functions, a system control program can be extended to support multiple virtual storages, all implemented with a single main storage. With this approach, each system user, whether a batch multiprogramming job, an online data communication system, or a programmer using interactive computing facilities, has access to an address space, storage devices, and a share of the CPU, all controlled by the virtual storage control program. In a sense, in a multiple virtual storage environment, each user has access to his own machine. And if that's the case, why not allow a user to load and execute an operating system in this machine, such as the disk operating system? Because there's a single but important problem. In this environment, the user's operating system would not have access to the System 370 privilege state that's needed to exercise control over the computer's basic resources. For example, as soon as the user's operating system tried to issue the Start I.O. machine instruction, it would bomb out. Use of the Start I.O. instruction is restricted to the real control program that executes in the System 370 privilege state. Now this is too bad because there are many functions that could be performed in an environment where an individual user has access to his own operating system. For example, he could test complex applications, generate an operating system, or develop programs with complete flexibility and scheduling and without interfering with anyone else's work. And it's just this kind of capability that's provided by the operating system called VM370 the Virtual Machine Facility 370. The VM370 control program enables users to execute privileged instruction in a pseudo-privileged state within their address space. That is, the control program intercepts and analyzes these instructions and executes them for the user. The VM370 control program can therefore allow any System 370 or System 360 operating system to reside in a virtual address space and to appear to execute as it would in a dedicated machine, with the exception of elapsed time. VM370 creates an environment capable of supporting full system operations. We call this a virtual machine. Access to a virtual machine is provided through a terminal for example, a 3270 video display that's attached to a System 370 executing under the VM370 control program. Each terminal attached to the System 370 then can provide a separate virtual machine to its user. The terminal becomes the console of the virtual machine. Console operations such as displaying storage are performed at the terminal using VM370 commands. However, to support full system operations, a virtual machine must have the same functional components as a real machine. So let's examine how VM370 implements these virtual machine components. The storage of a virtual machine is implemented as a virtual address space in the same way as it's handled in other virtual storage operating systems, through a paging device and translation hardware and software. A virtual CPU is provided by giving each virtual machine a portion of real CPU time. Storage devices such as tape, unit record, and direct access storage devices are implemented in a variety of ways. When a virtual machine requires a tape drive, the VM370 operator assigns a real tape device to the virtual machine. Then during program execution, the VM370 control program translates this real device address to the virtual tape drive address. 
If actual physical intervention is required, as it would be in this case to mount the user's tape reel, it's done by the VM370 operator. Tape drives aren't often used by a virtual machine, but Unit record devices such as card readers and printers are required by most virtual machine users. And it would therefore be impractical to dedicate real devices to each virtual machine. Instead, unit record operations for virtual machines are supported in VM370 using spooling techniques. For example, output for printing is written on a direct access device and performed for the virtual machine user as soon as a real printer becomes available. Under VM370, virtual direct access storage devices are implemented to support all virtual machine requirements. Most user needs are satisfied by assigning one or more mini disks to their virtual machine. A mini disk in VM370 serves the function of a virtual disk drive. The mini disk appears as a real disk to a user's virtual machine. It's called a mini disk because it's usually smaller than a physical disk pack. Some fixed number of cylinders are assigned to each mini disk depending on the user's needs. Most mini disks are smaller than a physical disk pack, but if a virtual machine requires it, a mini disk can be assigned to a complete disk pack. As we said before, the console of each virtual machine is simulated on a terminal with typed VM370 commands replacing physical operations such as pushing the IPL button. Normal operator to system communications are performed on the terminal as they would be on the console of a dedicated system. So now we have a virtual machine. Let's see what we can do with it. Well, we might begin by loading the operating system we have available in our shop. This might be a system like DOS. The system we load can then be used for batch production just as it would be on a dedicated machine. But why do this? We could load the operating system directly into our real machine and avoid the overhead of somewhat slower operation caused by the addition of the VM370 control program. So this doesn't seem to make much sense. But let's examine this more closely. The point is, once the VM370 control program is executing, any number of virtual machines can be loaded and used for different purposes, such as batch production, or system testing, or program development. Each user can perform whatever tasks he wishes, independently of other users. Let's take a look at the program development function. Now, while it's possible to use a batch operating system, such as DOS, for this purpose, a programmer at a terminal doesn't need all the facilities provided by such a system. Rather, a control program that specifically supports program development and interactive computing can be used. And VM370 provides such a system called the Conversational Monitor System, or CMS. Instead of loading an operating system, such as DOS or OS, the user loads CMS. CMS is a control program specifically designed to support interactive conversational programming and data manipulation on a virtual machine. The CMS user can invoke any compiler available in his system's library. CMS provides a conversational interface to the compiler for development and testing. CMS also provides other facilities appropriate for conversational processing, such as data entry, data manipulation, and text processing. With CMS, then, several users can concurrently perform interactive computing operations on the same System 370. So far, we've seen the operation of multiple virtual machines on one real machine. Each virtual machine can be used to satisfy a specific requirement. The system programmer is testing a new release of an operating system. The application programmer is developing and testing programs. And an operator is running a batch system in production mode. The batch operating system we've illustrated thus far is DOS. However, the operating system that executes in a virtual machine can be one which itself supports a virtual address space such as DOSVS or OSVS1. 
We can even execute a system that supports multiple virtual storage, such as OSMVS in a virtual machine. These possibilities further enhance the functions that may be performed in a VM370 environment. For example, VM370 can be used to assist in the conversion from DOS or DOSVS to OSVS1. Prior to conversion, the new system can be tested in a virtual machine. During conversion, both systems can operate concurrently in virtual machines as required. It's even possible to execute the VM370 control program itself in a virtual machine. This mode of operation is used by IBM's development staff when they're building a new VM370 release. A VM370 user can benefit from this capability by generating and testing a new release of VM370 in a virtual machine concurrent with daily operations. As mentioned earlier, operators of virtual machines communicate through terminals. They're virtual machine consoles which are connected to the VM370 control program. Depending on the requirements of the virtual machine, the terminal may be located in the real machine room, in the local area, or in a completely remote location. For example, the virtual console of a batch production system would probably be located in the System 370 machine room. It's quite possible that the VM370 operator and the operator of the batch machine would be the same person. On the other hand, Application programmers and word processing users who use CMS would likely be using terminals located in their own work area. And at times, this may present some problems. Let's look, for example, at the situation of a programmer located some miles from the real computer system. He can examine his output on the display screen of a 3270. However, there are times he needs a hard copy printed listing. The hard copy should be available at his remote location rather than at the real printer of the System 370. And VM 370 has an answer to this problem. It provides a networking facility called RSCS, the Remote Spooling Communication Subsystem. RSCS allows both input and output operations to be performed for a virtual machine at a remote location. A virtual machine can direct that its virtual unit record devices be simulated at a remote workstation controlled by RSCS rather than at the local printer or card reader punch. This remote workstation can be a standalone unit record configuration, such as an IBM 3780, or a computer, such as an IBM System 3, or another System 370 with unit record devices attached for use by RSCS. RSCS can be used to submit jobs from a remote workstation to a batch system running in a virtual machine, and then output from the jobs can be transmitted to a printer back at the remote workstation. The batch system can be an operating system like DOS or OS, or it can be the CMS batch system. CMS batch makes the programming facilities of CMS available to a stream of jobs. These jobs can be submitted locally or remotely under the control of RSCS. The RSCS subsystem of VM370 can itself act as a remote workstation to another operating system. And thus, a programmer can develop a program under VM370 and then submit it for execution to a System 370 under the control of an operating system like OS MVS. This allows you to combine individual systems each satisfying specific objectives into a network of systems to satisfy all your needs. In this introduction, we have described the facilities provided by VM370 to demonstrate many functions that its users can perform. Using VM370, it's possible to back up a production system that normally executes on a real System 370. It allows you to use virtual machines to migrate to a new system. You can execute CMS in virtual machines to support interactive computing, data manipulation, and text processing. You can test a complex application in a virtual machine without disrupting system operations in case of failure. With VM370, you can perform a system generation in a virtual machine during prime shift operations. You can perform operating system maintenance in virtual machines. 
You can service local and remote users in a VM370 network and function as part of a network with other System 370s that operate under system control programs such as OSMVS. You've seen some of the many possible VM370 system configurations. For example, combining a batch multiprogramming system such as OSVS1 with interactive computing activity under CMS. You've seen how RSCS can be used to support processing at remote workstations and how a VM370 system itself may be part of an even larger network. By supporting the facility of virtual machines, the VM370 system, especially when combined with another IBM virtual storage operating system, can provide powerful functions that benefit many types of computer installations.